Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we are going to see how to install the 3D fused X and Z axis linear rail upgrade kit for the Creality Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro 3D printers. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So a few weeks ago, my friend Cody at 3D Fused sent me the X and Z axis linear rail kit for my Ender 3 Pro. And because 3D Fused sells the kit as either an X axis only kit or an X and Z axis kit, I'm making installation videos covering both options. So previously, we saw how to install the X-axis kit. Today, we'll see how to install the X and Z kits. I've spent a lot of time with the Y-axis kit on the printer and a little bit of time with the X-axis kit on the printer. And I'm happy to report that I've had no issues to speak of. These kits are made from thick water jet cut aluminum plates and the linear rails are super precise and maintenance is simple. Every few weeks I put a drop of the 3D fused rail oil in the channels on either side of each rail, move that axis back and forth a few times, and then wipe the rail off with a paper towel. And the print quality that I'm getting is great. As a quick example, here's Luis Drigger's Aria Dragon printed in Overture Black PLA on this Ender 3 with the X and Y rail kits on board. So here's a quick overview of the installation process for the X and Z linear rail kit. First, we'll need to unload any filament that's in the printer because we've got to disconnect the Bowden tube from the extruder. Then we'll unplug the cables from the x-axis stepper motor, the x-axis end stop, and the extruder stepper motor. After that, we'll remove the fan shroud and the hot end and then set those behind the printer out of the way. We're going to remove the cross beam from the top of the printer and then we're going to slide the entire x-axis assembly up and off. Then we'll move the x-axis stepper motor, x-axis end stop, and extruder bracket over to the new x gantry. And in a move that would make Ivan Miranda proud, there will be spacers! We'll bolt the z-axis linear rails onto the z-uprights using a big pile of T-nuts and M3 screws. Then we're going to bolt the new x gantry to the rails on the z-axis, make a few adjustments to get things aligned, and finally we'll attach the hot-ended fan shroud to the new x carriage, reconnect all the things that we disconnected, get the bed leveled or trammed, and then we're done. But before we do any of that, I want you to print out a couple of these little alignment tools that I designed. I was taken to task in the X only video because I didn't go over ensuring that the X gantry was level or parallel to the horizontal axis of the printer. So this time around, I wanted to make sure we had that covered. You'll see me using these in the video as we're installing the X gantry, and in my opinion, these are essential to being able to get the gantry parallel with the horizontal plane of the printer. So go print out a pair of these, they're on Thingiverse, and the link is in the description. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get started. If you have filament loaded in the printer, turn the printer on, heat the nozzle, and unload the filament. Then turn the printer off and unplug it. Wait for the printer to cool to a safe temperature before proceeding. Manually move the x-axis gantry about three quarters of the way up the z-axis so that you've got room to work. Disconnect the Bowden tube from the extruder. Remove the fan shroud from the hot end. Then remove the hot end from the X carriage. Set the hot end safely out of the way behind the printer. Unplug the cable from the extruder stepper motor, the X axis stepper motor, and the X axis limit switch. Remove the spool holder and set it aside. Remove the four bolts holding the top crossbar to the Z extrusions and set it aside. Slide the stock X gantry up and off the printer. Remove the wheel bracket from the non-motor side of the stock X gantry. Loosen the X-belt idler to release tension on the belt. 
Unhook the belt from the X carriage, then remove the belt. Remove the motor and wheel bracket from the other side of the stock X gantry. Cut the zip tie securing the belt on the 3D fused X gantry so it won't be in the way. Transfer the extruder bracket to the 3D fused X gantry using the bolts and spacers included in the kit. Make sure all three bolts are tight before proceeding. Remove the four screws holding the X-axis limit switch cover to the bracket. The screws go through the cover and into the motor. Separate the limit switch cover and the bracket from the stepper motor. Install the stepper motor onto the 3D fused X gantry using the screws included in the kit. Ensure that the motor's connector faces down. Remove the X axis limit switch from the stock cover. Install the limit switch on the adjustable limit switch mount on the 3D fused gantry using the screws included in the kit. Use the X-belt tensioning screw to tighten the belt. Remove the two screws securing the screen to the front of the printer. This will allow easier access to the lower portion of the Z extrusion located behind the screen. Set the screen aside. Install the screws and T-nuts in both of the Z-axis rails. Each rail takes 16 screws and T-nuts. Cut the zip ties securing the block to the rail to access the screw holes they covered. But be careful, if you allow the block to slide off the rail, you risk losing ball bearings. Align the T-nuts so they're in line with the length of the rail. This allows them to fit into the slots on the Z extrusions. On the left side Z extrusion, mount the rail to the slot closest to the bed. First, tighten the top screw, then tighten the bottom one. As you tighten the screws, make sure the T-nuts rotate into place and keep the rail as close to the right side as possible. The idea is to keep the rail parallel to the Z extrusion and lining it up against one side of a slot is a good way to do this. Repeat this process with the right side rail, again mounting it to the slot closest to the bed. This time, keep the rail as close to the left side as possible. Finally, reattach the screen to the front of the printer. Remove the existing Z-axis in-stop switch mounting bracket. Unplug the Z-axis in-stop switch cable. Remove the Z-axis in-stop switch from the stock mounting bracket. Then install the in-stop switch on the 3D fused mounting bracket using the screws included in the kit. Reconnect the Z-axis in-stop switch cable. Attach the 3D fused Z-axis in-stop switch mounting bracket to the printer. Loosen the set screw securing the lead screw to the coupler on the Z-axis motor. Then remove the lead screw. Slide the 3D fused X gantry over the Z extrusions and allow it to rest on the bed.
loosely bolt the X gantry to the Z axis linear rail blocks. These need to be loose. We'll adjust and tighten them in a moment. And when I say these need to be loose, I mean you need to be able to tilt the X gantry like this. Now reattach the cross member at the top of the Z tower. Remember those alignment tools I told you to print? Now is the time to use them. Hang them on the cross member. These will help us get the X gantry parallel to it. Slide the X gantry up and hang it on the alignment tools. Make sure the gantry is resting evenly on both of them. Then tighten the screws securing the X gantry to the Z axis linear rail blocks. Remove the alignment tools and rest the X gantry on the bed. Ensure that the X gantry is able to move smoothly and doesn't bind. If it binds, loosen all the screws on one Z rail just a bit. Move the gantry to the top and tighten the top screw on the rail. Then move the gantry to the bottom and tighten the bottom screw on the rail. This will ensure both rails are aligned. Tighten the remaining screws on the rail. Repeat this until you have smooth motion. Feed the lead screw through the brass nut on the extruder bracket and then into the coupler on the Z axis stepper motor. Tighten the set screw to secure the lead screw in the coupler. Reconnect the cables for the extruder stepper motor, the X-axis stepper motor, and the X-axis end stop switch. Reinstall the hot end using the stock screws. Then reinstall the fan shroud using the stock screws and reattach the Bowden tube to the extruder. Reinstall the spool holder. Let's adjust the x-axis limit switch so we can set the nozzle's home position. Loosen the set screw holding the adjustable x-axis limit switch mount in place. Press the X carriage against the limit switch and slide both until the nozzle is aligned above the left edge of the bed. Then tighten the set screw to keep the limit switch in position. Next, let's adjust the Z axis limit switch to get the nozzle closer to the bed. Manually adjust the Z axis until the nozzle is about a millimeter above the bed. Then loosen the set screws holding the Z axis limit switch mount in place. Slide the mount up until the switch clicks, then tighten the screws to secure the mount. Now use your favorite method to level or tram your bed, and then you're ready to print. There, now we've got an Ender 3 Pro with linear rails on the X, Y, and Z axes. Linear rails are designed for smooth, high-precision motion, and I've seen really good print quality with the X and Y rail kits on board, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the Ender 3 Pro prints with all three axes on rails. So, huge thanks to Cody at 3D Fuse for sending this upgrade kit to me free of charge. There's a link in the description to the kits. The X and Z kit clocks in at just under $150 US. Also in the description is a discount code that'll save you 15% on the rail kits from 3D Fused. It's valid for as long as it's in the description. Now, there are those who would point out that by adding the X, Y, and Z linear rail kits to the Ender 3 Pro, you're coming close to doubling the price of the printer. But here's the great thing about an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. It's a good, inexpensive printer that you can upgrade to be whatever you want it to be, and you can do it as your budget allows. You want silent stepper drivers? For 50 bucks, you can replace the stock main board with Creality's new silent main board. You want to print higher temperature materials than you can safely do with a PTFE lined hot end? For 60 bucks, you can bolt on a Micro Swiss all metal hot end. I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a 3D printer with linear rails on all three axes that also has the Ender 3 Pro's build volume for the cost of this printer plus these kits. 
But how you choose to upgrade your printer is up to you. It's like cars. Some people like bolting huge wings on the back of them or making the wheels stick way out. That's not my cup of tea, but they like it, and that's what matters. It's your printer, so have fun with it. Anyway, I think that about does it for this episode, so thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any cool 3D printing stuff, and if you like the episode, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and you want to help out, you could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar, and links for those are in the description. You could also use the affiliate links in the description if you're shopping on Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but a tiny portion of any purchase that you make helps fund the channel, and it's very much appreciated. Well, now that I've got linear rails on the X, Y, and Z axes, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>